actually, by doing yoga asana class today, we are doing something Rinpoche said is a good thing to do on this auspicious day. That's always a good thing to do. So. I'm hit, hitting the mute now. I wish I could chant in Tombo V, but I'm sorry.
Okay, stand in Dadasana. Sorry, Dadasana. So we're going to take a few standing poses uh, if you need blocks for arm support. Have those ready to go. Okay. So the headless yogi here. Join the feet if you can, otherwise just parallel, just wide breath. <laughs> Find the four corners of your feet. Base of the big toe extend out through the big toe. Base of the little toe extending out through the little. And then inner and outer heel. And you activate the arches by grounding the four corners of your feet, but keep the toes long. You know, we, we know the sole of the foot is the bottom of the foot. Mr. Iyengar would also say, extend the sole of your toes underside of your toes. Mm. Now the legs automatically engage when you ground the feet and activate the arches. But that's a response. We want some intentional action in our asana. So from the activation of the arches, draw the inner thighs, the back thighs up. You don't have to push backward from the bone. Draw the legs up and the internal rotation will take the groin and femur back so that you levelize, as we used to say, some of you will remember that term. We levelize the pelvis. And how do we do that, Suzanne? We intelligize the area. That's right. <laughs> so four corners of the feet rooting, extend the sole of the toes. Intentionally draw the inner and back thighs up, levelize the pelvis. Relax the shoulders down wide and begin to ascend. As you receive that ascending action from the thighs, then you ascend the front of the spinal column from the tip of the coccyx to the base of the skull. So you don't have to push the spine forward. It receives the action of the legs, front of the spine or anterior spinal column ascending, but the shoulders wide, neck and throat soft. And of course, with the feet together, there's a little bit of wobble. Keep adjusting to the center arch. So there's discernment, viveka in Sanskrit, which means the discernment between the real and the unreal, the eternal from the non-eternal, the not-self from the self. Take the arms up to Urdhva Hastasana. Externally rotating the arms. 
So the outer deltoid armpit rolls forward and comes toward the socket. You complete the rotation by taking the inner armpit head of the humerus into the socket. Release any impingement on the neck. You can do Ordhva Namaskar if you can keep the elbows extended. And with the head of the humerus moving into the socket, if possible, the arms are in line with or slightly behind the ears. Buttocks down, floating ribs up, and arms down to the side. Okay, bring the left leg up into tree pose. If you're having a wobbly day, feel free to use a prop, a wall, or a chair. Don't look at the screen. That'll just pull you out of your body. Drop the mind from the brain into the center chest. Extend the trunk and arms up. Back to Anjali Mudra. Lower the arms, lower the leg, back to Tadasana. Okay, resetting. And the right foot up into Vrikshasan. And the drunken arms up. Back to arms and mudra. And then back to Okay, step the legs wide, take Trikonasana to the right. Trikonasana to the right. I'm not going to be doing all the poses with you. I just taught a class and did some. So, In my old age, I can't do every pose in every class anymore. Mm -hmm. So find your breath and find your feet. Same dynamic, equal weight on the four corners of both feet with the toe, sole of the toe extending. So the arches activate to draw the legs up. Extend out over the right leg. Don't just hang the body out there in space. Make the side bodies longer and longer. Lift the top chest so the right chest comes under you, almost in front of the upper chest, energetically. Okay, inhale, breath come up. <clears throat> Left leg out, right foot in. Find the soles, find the arches. And extend out into Trikonasana. So it's Utita Trikonasana, extending triangle. Find your breath, find your base. Four corners of both feet. Toes long. Arches activate the intelligence of the legs up. And extend the spinal column and even the periphery, excuse me. Check your shoulder blades. They often hunch up near the neck, a fine, fine tadasana with your shoulder blades. Lift the top chest up, roll that left chest under so it's not behind you. If you wanna look up, keep the left side of the neck long and drop the chin slightly toward the throat as you rotate the chest and thoracic spine to turn the neck.
Inhale, breath, come up. And step back into Tadasana. Or jump, some of you old school yogis. <laughs> Deep inhale, jump or step wide. Right leg out, left leg in. Wait there. Often your mind is racing ahead of what your body's actually doing. So activate your arches. That is my overarching concern this morning. Ah, 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 ah. Bend the leg to Virabhadrasana too. So extend the sole of the toes, equal weight on the four corners of both feet. So that especially the back arch active keeps the inner thigh drawn up, drawn up to stabilize that left hip joint. Now, as you look to the right, slightly release the belly and the chest to the left. Just a tiny bit. Ah. Then extend into Parshva Konasan. Side angle posture. I like to circumduct my arm these days rather than bring it over. I find that movement out and up really helps me open the chest. Whee! <laughs> find the way to, now, so ground the heels, extend the sole, the toes, find the corners of your feet. Nice. Now extend out of the groin, as if the right floating rib was going to touch the top of your thigh, or at least moving in that general direction. Relax the neck and throat. And deep inhale, breath come up. And turning to the left, extending the arms. Go to Virabhadrasana two. Center of the torso. There's a tendency to lean slightly to the left. Root the four corners of both feet to activate the legs. Lift out of the groins. As you look to the left, slightly release the belly and the chest from left to right. Just a tiny bit. Extend into Parshva Konasana. If your elbow's on your knee, John, use your elbow to take the knee a little back. Yeah. Find your arches again. Bend out of the hips as if the left floating rib was going to touch the top of the thigh. So it moves away from the pelvic rib. B, take the arm way back. Yeah, good, better. Inhale, breath, come up. <clears throat> back to Tadasana. <sighs> How many standing pose are there? 30? 25? There are a lot. Let's see how many we do. You do. I'm going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ardha Chandrasana to the right. If you want to use a wall today, feel free to use the wall. Ardha Chandra. Activate the raised leg sole. Be strong, like you would be doing head balance with that foot. Push through the center arch ball now. Draw the standing leg up. Roll the upper armpit chest back. Bring the lower armpit chest under you or even in front. There you go. That's better. Even if you fall over, so what? And... 
turn into Virabhadrasana 3. Figure it out. <laughs> so the back, back toe and knee faces the floor. Tuck the buttock. If you want to use a support, that's okay. You can also bring the hands alongside the torso if they don't go forward. Okay, Betsy, bring your torso down more. Well, ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to Vera 1 from Vera 3. Oh my god. I can see that Vera 3 is not on your playlist. <laughs> hey, you folks got to shuffle your playlist a little bit here. All right, come out of the pose. <laughs> Ardha Chandrasana to the left. Ardha Chandra. I hope you saw the blue moon last weekend. It was gorgeous. So really activate that foot on the wall, Suzanne. Come on. Mm. And of course, the, the standing foot's going to wobble all over the place, right? So stabilize it as best you can. Lift off the lower arm and leg. Raise the right ankle higher than your hip joint, if you can, by making it longer. Nice. All right. Now, rotate. Bring the right hand to the floor. Turn your pelvis. Tuck the buttocks. Now, activate that back leg. Groin to heel. Ooh. Don't try to do all the pose from your torso. Then, either keep your hands on the floor or stretch the arms forward or bring them alongside your hips. Look up now, Patty. Navel contracts everybody slightly toward the spine and tuck the sit bones. There we go. Not bad for an old lady. Okay, back to zero one. I hope you get a lot older too. <sighs> Extend those arms out of your lumbar spine. V is already on holiday. Okay, <laughs> come on to the ball. Back to Tadasana. You realize I can see you, V. You know? All right. Be in Tadasana. Let go of the shame of your Virabhadrasana 3. presentation. <laughs> I'm kidding. At least you made a sincere effort. Yeah, you made a sincere effort? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I'll give you that. All right. Parshvotanasana to the right. So, if you can bring the hands to Namaskar behind the back, do that. Otherwise, just clasp your forearms or elbows behind your back. Right foot forward, left leg back, wait there. Round your feet, activate your arches, draw the right hip back a little and turn your left buttock and hip forward as you extend out over your leg. Forward bend. Keep your collarbones level. Keep your feet very active. Activate those arches. Yes. Now, slightly contract the abdomen and then release it and have a sense of the sternum lengthening forward beyond those toes, at least energetically. Then take the hands to the floor, come to concave spine. You might need a block for this, Paravritta Trikonasan, revolving triangle. Right arm goes up, left arm is on the shin or the block on the inner or outer heel. Take the upper arm way, revolve triangle spadar, left arm down, right arm up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now activate your feet, your arches. Find Tadasana with your shoulder blade. Lengthen the sternum. Find that itty bitty back bend there. Ah. 
then step up into Parvrita Ardha Chandrasana. Reach out with the left hand, so now you're standing on the right leg. Extend the left leg to make it longer. Or the hand can go, upper arm can go on the hip. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Joy? Hey. <laughs> okay. Come back down into Paravritta Trikonasana for a breath or two. Who said there's no flow in a yoga? All right. Inhale, breath, come up. <clears throat> Although there's not much of a flow here, it's a little jerky. That's okay. All right, Ardha Chandra, where are we? Ardha Chandra to the left? Parshvo. No, no, Parshvo, par, thank you, Velma. Parshvo. <laughs> Parshvo Danapa. Do all the stuff I mentioned previously. <laughs> Extend out over your leg. Level off the collarbones. Lift the elbows a little. Feel free to go down if you have more range. Don't forget to breathe. Be aware of your soul. Okay, go to Parabrita Trikonasan. Right hand comes down, left arm swings up and back. Use the height if you need it to open the chest. Hmm. And then step out and up to Parabrita Ardachindra. Step back to Parvita Trikona. And inhale, breath up. Come back to Tada. Separate the legs hip width, go to pop concave spine with an up. So what keeping the concave spine, walk the hands back as far as possible. And exhale, draw the inner back thigh up to extend the side torso down. Now, very intentionally, slightly contract the abdomen and then release it. Contract it, release it to lengthen the front of the spine. Slight contraction, release it again. Some of you are aware of, we've taught this, we call it the jellyfish. So there's a little contraction, release, contraction, extension, contraction, extension. Thanks to Arthur Kilmurray for that. Mm -hmm. Arthur. Okay. Inhale, breath, come up. And then last but not least, Kasaratapado Tanasan, which you already did, Larry, but that's okay. Go to concave spine. Wait there. So this pose is a forward bend in the hips and a back bend between the shoulder blades. 
Create that back bend. Yeah. Extend the fourth and fifth toe, the ring toe and the pinky toe. Does that activate your arch? Mm -hmm. I say probably, as long as you're not gripping the toes. And gradually take the trunk and head down. Elbows over wrists, wrists in line with armpits. Keep the concave, keep the back bend. Again, very slight contraction of the abdomen release. Connect the release to lengthening the anterior lumbar spine. So no gripping in the happiness pouch, V. Nice. All right, come back to concave spine. And inhale, breath come up. Okay. <laughs> All right. But how does that help your headstand? Let's find out. <laughs> okay, if you're not doing sheer sauce, then go make some nice chai. I'm sorry, Suzanne, I use a mix. I do not make my own chai. So if you're not doing shir sasana, do some other forward bend. I think most of you are doing. Or you can do the base of headstand as well. Or prasara to padottanasana, down dog head support, whatever works. You want to keep the inversion. You want to keep the brain below the heart. Now, act, work your feet as if you were doing a standing pose. Extend the outer edge, the inner edge, wide toes. The only difference is, as you extend out from the center arch through the sole of your toes, there is a very slight contraction of the Achilles tendon. But the inner heel and big toe mound must still be projected higher than the outer heel and little toe. So if you're on the wall, Joy, keep your feet Really tadasana sized. <laughs> nice. Madhakonasan, legs, those of you who can do that. Elbows in, Larry, elbows in. Navel back, sacrum, lumbar sacrum up. There you go, that's it, Katie. So the legs and knees and thighs will feel way too far forward in this variation if you levelize the pelvis. Then why do pavista legs if you can do that or re-extend the legs back to shirsasana? Again, very active feet, outer hips compact to the socket. Don't make, don't, so the legs hold up the legs, not the neck. Now spinning the thighs internally, go back to shirsasana. Make the leg longer as you go up. Whoops, don't knock over your picture though. 
All right, the breath takes you out of the pose. Come down. Rest with the head down for a few breaths. Ah. Supta Virasana. Everybody's second favorite pose after Shavasana. So use height if you need it. If you don't need height, feel free to lie back with just no height. Have room to extend your arms though, please. Oh, Betsy, what is, is that a stuffed leopard on your thing there? Yeah. <laughs> it's my it's pet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Sukta Virasana. Long groins or happy groins. Remember Ramanan's long groin rice? <laughs> Suzanne, you remember that? Long groin rice, right. Or Gabriel's tall groin, wide groin, deep groin. <laughs> or, as we all know, groinal effervescence. <laughs> I don't know if you can say that in public anymore, but I did. <laughs> Too late now. So bring it up with HR, okay, if you need to. Okay. So, very subtly, Tadasana sides the sole of your foot. Send the arms over the head. If you're up on a large height, just you can do arm extension, but you want to make sure they're level so you can touch the tips of the thumbs. Or you can clasp your elbows. If you clasp your elbows, clasp with the odd arm interlock first, not the one you would do unconsciously. Okay, then receive the breath. Feel the breath moving into the back body and getting wider and wider and wider up in the back body, like you're filling up a funnel. Now, don't try and force that. It might take a number of breaths to even come close to that, which is fine. Rhythm and symmetry are always more important than keep breathing slowly. So it's like you're filling up a funnel so the breath begins from the pelvic floor, and as it moves up gradually and gently, it's getting wider and wider and wider, especially in the back body. At the top of the inhalation, prolong the pause very briefly, and then begin to release the diaphragm. As the diaphragm releases and the breath starts to flow out, there'll come a point where you have to begin to release the intercostals to continue the relaxed release of the diaphragm. But so you don't want to collapse the chest too quickly on the exhale. So how high the breath is going to come, that's not too important. It may get all the way up. It may not. You shouldn't strain the neck, throat, tongue, or jaw ever when you're doing pranayama. If you're clasping the elbows now, switch the interlock of the arms. And 
readjust. release and sit up out of Sukta Virasana. And gradually extend your legs. Take Adho Mukha Svanasana, down face dog. Adho Mukha. Adho Mukha Now ground the four corners of your palm so that the center palm, you actually have an arch in the palm. That center palm is ascending because you're grounding evenly the inner and outer wrist, base of the palm, the base of the index finger, base of the little finger. From there, draw the triceps, the outer upper arms up to the socket, hugging in toward the bone a little. Then, then, after receiving the arms, extend from armpit through sit bones. Activate the arches of the feet and the hands. Wide palms are happy palms. Okay, bend the knees and come down, rest. Okay, then we're going to take Parian Passan, supported couch pose. So if you Either use a block, or if you can, use two bolsters. Um, let me drop, lower the camera slightly. So, this is where you sit in Dandasana, or if you can, Virasana. And you lie back on the block between the shoulder blades. And the other block is through your head support. So you really have to arch the back as you lie down, center it as much as you can, and the other block is for head support. So the legs are either straight out in Dandasan or Vira. Broad feet. Widen the ball mounts in Virasa. Widen the heel. Slightly extend the inner heel away from the inner ankle if you're in Virasana. Scoop the buttock flesh under. So all of the skin and flesh is moving down from the pelvic rim to the sitting bone. Take the arms up and over the head. Extend the arms as if they're coming from your floating ribs. Don't just lie heavily on the block. Extend the front of your anterior spine, connecting to the base of your skull. Then bending the elbows, palms to the head support block. The elbows almost always go out initially, which is fine. Rotate the humerus in the socket to bring the elbows to point up. Walk the hands to the back edge of the block towards your skull, to your capacity. And walk the hands down as much as you can. Press the little finger side of the palm to support that rotation of the humerus. 
those of you who can, take the head support block to the next lowest level, or stay where you are. Again, don't just press the spine into the block. Lengthen the front of the thoracic spine through the back of the neck into the base of the skull. So you're not, you're staying connected. You're not cutting off your head mm -hmm. energetically. Elbows in a little bit. Nice. You could also, now everybody extend the arms straight again. Touch the tips of the thumbs so you know they're level. Some of you might go to the floor. That's perfectly okay if you can go that down with the hands now to create a little bigger back bend. Or clasp elbows, that's great too. Okay, bring the arms up and over, ground the arms and inhale, breath sit up. Dome out of the pose, the way you do when you come out of the chair. Ah. Mm. There's an ah. In <laughs> ah. Okay. Now we're going to back bend a little more. Take Viparita Dandasana in the chair. Open our hearts. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> if you don't have a chair, you are obviously not committed. Maybe that's a little shaming. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. It's all right. Well, my old Iyengar teachers, they were all shame-based teachers. <laughs> I, I, and I have to, I, I have to apologize for the '80s folks. I was a little overzealous. <laughs> Maybe the '90s too. I don't know. You are good. What do you think, Patty? How long did it last? <laughs> too long. Let's put it that way. All right. Dvipada Viparita Dandasana. You got this one, John. You remember this? Okay. So we kind of prepped a little with the previous pose. You can do bent legs, straight legs, happy legs, sad legs. No. Find your feet. Tadasana size your feet. Again, don't just let me see how to say this. You're not just lying over the chair. Extend the anterior thoracic spine to connect with the neck to dome over the chair. Now, sometimes it is actually useful to use leverage of the back body against the front edge of the chair. But that should be in, <clears throat> in service, in my experience, of lengthening the spine, opening the chest, and relaxing my throat. <clears throat> Even though the throat is stretched, Relax the tongue, the vocal cord, and the base of the brain. Look ridiculously happy. The cat, Larry, is not impressed. <laughs> but they never are. Trying to please a cat is futile. <laughs> nice. All right, if you haven't added the arm extension and you want to, feel free to do that now, but there should be as much intelligence through the legs and heels and soles as there is through the upper body and arms. Again, dome over the edge of the chair. 
Dr. Iyengar's wonderful way of saying that. Domi. And bring the arms up. Inhale, breath. Comes out of the happy pose. And then it seems like re recently, whether I say it or not, everybody twists to the right and twists to the left. So go ahead. <laughs> Who am I to do a nice twist to the right, Mangala? I use that. Try, try this, Mangala. Just sit cross legs. Because you're not sitting in the chair. Okay. I'm not even going to give, as the kids say these days, cues. Right, Betsy? Cues? I thought we were just giving instructions. But right. Nowadays, they give cues. All right, turn to the other side. Sit up tall to turn. It's an ascending spiral of the spinal column. So when you rotate the outer body, how does that affect the actual spinal column? So in, in, in the asana practice, the core is not your abdominal wall. It's the sushumna nadi. Can you make the sushumna nadi parallel? That's the center axis of the spine. That's the energetic pranic axis around which the spinal column forms. So there's not the spinal column. Much subtler than that. All right, release and come out of the pose. Not an abdominal thing. That's an exercise fitness thing, which may or may not be applicable depending on what you're doing. It's not in yoga. <clears throat> the only contraction of the abdomen we do in yoga generally is upyana bandha. Upyana bandha. Okay, sarvangasana. Did I say sarvangasana yet? You just but did. Most of you by now, you know the last third of my classes are usually fairly predictable, right? Mm -hmm. But there's something about that's very beneficial about having something you do very, very regularly. Because even though you may do it every day, it's going to be different every day. <clears throat> So you take that opening of the thoracic area into your sarvangasana as best you can. Oh, Larry, that's a great use of that prop. Good, good on you, man. Yeah, good, yeah. Hold those sidebars and open the upper arms a little more. Open the chest. Nice. <clears throat> Again, activate your feet now as if you were doing a standing pose. So don't stop the extension at the ankles. <clears throat> 
Some of you might remember in, in class where we used to wrap a long strip belt around a dowel, put it under the pelvic rim, and then cinch it up on the soles of the feet and push up. Mm. So imagine you have a, a band from the pelvic rim up through the sole of the feet, and you're pushing up into that band. So the sacrum is also, pelvis is moving up energetically. If you're using the chair, you do want to anchor the inner thigh to the socket, but you still want a sense of the ascending from the lumbar spine, not just sitting on it. Your lower back will thank you in the long run. Okay, Larry, take the leg slightly back, away from your head. Tiny, yeah, good, good. So that inguinal crease, pelvic rim diagonal to the pubic plate is fully lengthened. It's a good way to tell when, if the legs are, have gone out of vertical. Okay. Go to plow pose, halasana. <clears throat> so, John, when you do halasana, you're either going to need another chair or a wall. So, for today, don't do halasana, okay? Susan can show you how to do that. Yeah, oh, were you getting there? Maybe I didn't see that, that you were gradually lowering your feet. Okay, I couldn't see. Well, if, if you can do that, that's, that's great. Now, Larry, can you still hold the sidebar? Ah, now press it by, by grounding from the head of the, so, so, Patty, even though the arms are over the head, keep grounding the humerus. And even though the back is curved, have a sense of not sitting on your neck and your throat energetically. Ah, nice. That way. Okay. Gradually roll out of Alaska. Breathing happily. Okay, take Setubanda, but use as much height as you possibly can under your hips. <coughs> you still want to be able to be on top of your trapezius. If you need to elevate your legs a little, that's fine. You can put the heels up on a chair or a block. Do not try to put your heels on the cat. <laughs> or your dog. <laughs> it's hard to decide whether to do Setu Banda or play with the pet, you know? <laughs> Maybe you can do both. So, you can also just lie over a bolster, crosswise, or lengthwise, or your shoulder stand height is often enough for a lot of people. Now, you don't have to be heavy on the, up, on the shoulders. In fact, you can even slightly float. Now, as long as you're moving the chest toward the head without blocking off the neck or the throat. Often in Setubanda, the people have to sink into the sternum, so widen the intercostals, the front ribs, the collarbones, create space for the thoracic spine again to be lengthening. So, yes, there isn't 
posterior compression of the spine, but the anterior spine must lengthen so as not to turn that into a grip. But again, like the Buddha said, see for yourself if what I'm telling you is true. Recognize your breath. I haven't talked a lot about the breath other than in Sikhidharasa this morning. But whether you're just doing breath awareness or some form of an intentional breath, always want to be with the breath in the asana. Rolling to the side, sit up, sit cross legs, but forward bend with head support, cross legs. Very easy height. Maybe it's a chair, maybe it's a block or bolster. want to sit up on a little height, that's often very useful, especially if you're a little tighter. So lifting up and out, not just contracting, the nice length of the head releases down. Very easy to get the head to to start with. You don't have to push. Breathe into the back. You should be able to rest the head without any effort at all. So relaxing the neck and throat, resting the weight of the skull more and more completely. But without pushing the brain against the forehead, let the brain relax inside the skull. Inhale, breath, sit up, switch the cross of the legs, and go forward one more. One more time.
So letting the head lag a little behind as you lengthen, lift the heart center to come up, and then take Shavasana. Letting go, letting loose everywhere, and gradually releasing the effort of the dynamic postures. And do the same discernment to Shavasana. Feeling the body resting on the earth. Earth takes place, relaxing and releasing the body along, around the breath, where the breath flows with very little, if any, obstruction.
execute the virtue gathered through our practice to the lasting welfare, happiness, freedom, awakening of all beings everywhere, <clears throat> even the red states. <laughs> they count, you know. Uh, oh. Namaste. I don't know about you, but I'm going to party like it's 1999. <laughs> Even if it's not doesn't matter. <laughs> Can we all just exhale now? Thanks, <sighs> William. Somebody, somebody posted that at least now there will be some adults in the room where it happened. Yeah. 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 For all you Hamilton fans out there, right? Thanks, William. Okay. Thank you, William. Have a lot going on. Everybody, really. Yeah.